He's now five points behind Janet. He's still cool, nice and cool, and a dog's waiting to be told what to do. Still we lie down, lie down. It's a case of taking any two sheep off, remember? Dog moved up. Neil's pointing to the sheep and Craig's waiting and okay. there's the chance. Oh, and that was a good shed. That was a good shed, a cool, composed, and 10 out of 10, four points for his shedding. Moves across to the pen. Lie down, lie down. Steal we. Lie down. Steal we. Lie down. Moves his sheep up to the pen and still Steal we. quiet, still cool, still composed. Steal we. Steady, steady, lie down. Steal we. Lie down. Get up, get up. Steady now. Lie down. Steal me. Lie down. Lie down. Some of these youngsters are more composed than the older men, aren't they? Shaping up for a good pen. Good finish. That's 10 out of 10 for the pen. And that gives him 96 out of 110 points scored, and it's just one less than Janet. And Neil and Craig, they finish very strongly, but their work in the early stages let them down. It was an almost impossible task, and they were never able to catch up. So the English girl beats the three boys. Janet Mason and Slade win by the single point from Neil Ross of Scotland. Brian McConnell from Ireland's third and Robert Edwards from Wales is a very creditable fourth. Janet, that's absolutely marvellous. You are the young handless champion. It was a wonderful run. I'm sure you're jolly pleased to beat the boys, aren't you? Yes, I am, but they all did very well. I was very pleased that Slade did his best for me. He did absolutely marvellously, really, but what did you find your troubles with? Where, where were the difficulties? The course work was all right, but I came into a lot of trouble when I came into the shedding. He got very excited and wouldn't listen to me. I was wanting to move every time the sheep did. Why was that? I think maybe he gets to think that he knows best, and he just got too excited, really. And how often does he know best? Because looking at these trials, I've often wondered how much you have to know about sheep and how much you have to know about the dogs. And the dog must learn a lot too. Does he? Is he right sometimes? Oh, yes, he can be right sometimes, but uh, I have to correct him now and, now and again. Well, it, uh, it narrowed and narrowed to a whisker. Congratulations, and I hope you go on to great successes in the future. Thank you. Well, that brings us almost to the climax of our trials. Next week, we've got the finals of the singles and the brace. That'll give us the Television International Championship. But meanwhile, isn't it a joy to know in what good hands the future of the sport is, the hands of these youngsters? And who better to encourage them than my old friend Eric Halsell? He's been uh, involved with youth and he's been involved with sheepdog trials for the best part of his life. He's been in every programme of One Man and His Dog since we started. Uh, that's over 90 programmes. So, Eric, I can't think of a better chap to present the prizes. Will you please do the honour? Thank you, sir. I'm quite honoured on behalf of the BBC to present the, these trophies to these young people because, you know, young people and dogs are the salt of the earth, and if you've got a good dog like that, you're never lonely up on these felt tops. It's been a jolly good competition. We talk about, in sheepdog circles, we talk about doing 10 years apprenticeship. Well, any of these four youngsters can go tomorrow without any qualms whatsoever to take part in open competition. And the first thing you've got to do is learn to lose as well as learn to win. So a smile from everybody at Lost, and a smile for 
Neil Ross with Craig, the runner-up in the junior One Man and His Dog BBC competition. And the winner, of course, is our Janet. Janet with Slade, who gets this nice little trophy. The BBC One Man and His Dog in Anglers competition. The International Society's trophy. And that's for Slade. That's for Slade, who won it all. Well done. Well done. Well done, everybody. In about 45 minutes, Eric Robson continues his recreation of Wainwright's 40-year love affair with Scotland, treading this week the northwestern highlands. Before that, on two, we find... again together seven sheep pen in left bye ten points for the pen ten Done. points at stake Walk. Done. Walk. Done. Done. We. Stand. We. Stand. steady lass just keen isn't she anxious bye no just Come watch this watch this side Done. yet she did well there. She turned that sheep back there. Threatened to go up the side. And she's holding these sheep. Bye. Stan? Willem has every confidence Stand. in her here. She can hold these sheep. Stan? Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, I think that's full point. That's 10 out of 10 for the pen, and that brings his score up to a total of 97 out of 110 points. And then. Floss has known better days, although then. Willem, Willem was composed and he helped her. He helped her with his handling, but she seemed just a little unbalanced on the sheep. But a dog with her experience should have been more positive in the shedding ring as well. Quillam, I always enjoy watching old stages like you perform. It's a great education and, and great fun to watch. You've been trialling for 36 years, I think. Are you as keen as you were? No, I'm not as keen. Because the travelling that's uh, going into it, to go from one trial to the other, uh, puts me down a little bit. So I don't do so many trials. And uh, I enjoy it quite as much, but uh, I do less trials. Well, how does that affect your performance and the performance of your dogs? Well, uh, I must say I've got good dogs, but uh, perhaps my performance isn't as good because I'm not out competing often enough. I suppose the dogs are working on the farm and that keeps them up to oh, pitch? Yes. yes, definitely. You enjoy it as much, though. I expect you get a lot of pleasure in a quieter way. When we get to our vintage, you know, Gwilym, it slows us up a bit, but uh, we can still... Uh, wear out rather than rushed out, can't we? That's quite true, yes. But uh, they say, never say die till you're dead. <laughs> Wales can rightly claim to have some of the most beautiful scenery in the British Isles, and the 
mountains of Aaron, Caddy, Idris and Robel are three of the distant views enjoyed by our next competitor. He's Heffin Jones, aged 24, a young man who's been in trialling for only a few years, yet who's already making a mark in the sport. He's the eldest of four sons of Mr and Mrs Idris Jones, who've been farming sheep and cattle near Dolgethi for the past 40 odd years. In 1984, Heffin spent five months in New Zealand gaining experience on shearing sheep and generally widening his knowledge of stockmanship. Nowadays he spends about five weeks each summer contract shearing in Wales while for the rest of the year he's his father's right-hand man on the family farm. He's always been fond of dogs and in his teens his father gave him a two-month-old pup. Dad thought that the lad was old enough now to train a youngster from scratch to be a good farm dog. He enjoyed the challenge. It was the first animal that he could rightfully call his own. But sadly, when the young dog was two years old, she died of poisoning. Heffin was devastated. Shortly afterwards, and to help heal the wounds, a farming friend gave him a new puppet. She was called Meg and her young master was then 19. Get up, get up. When I started training her, she was only four or five months old. Um, she was a very easy bit to train. Um, you only had to show her a couple of things once or twice and you would remember. She'll work anything, cat sense, anything that moves. Um, it's a good partnership, I think. Anxious to have a go at trialling, Effin entered Meg for a competition when she was just nine months old. He admits that she was too young, and he remembers that first trial as a disaster. Come by. Come by. She wouldn't listen at all. Her mind went blank, I think. Well, I was a bit nervous as well. That didn't help. So, with his confidence dented, Heffin went back to the drawing board and persisted with his training, entering more trials, and after five or six attempts, Meg began to get the hang of what it was all about, and eventually this man and his dog started to get a run of second places, so that he thought that at last his patience and training were beginning to pay off. He was beginning to enjoy himself. Come by. Dan, Dan. It's, um, it's always a challenge. Every trial is a challenge. It's the pleasure of competing and the, the, the class of competing against, you know, very good competitors. And uh, just hope I'll improve as the year goes on. And success has come to Heffin and Meg. In 1986, they achieved their first win in an open trial, came seventh in the Welsh National that year, and 11th in the Supreme International. In June 1987, in the prestigious two-day trial at Pushglass, Heffin and Meg beat 245 competitors to win the coveted prize. Heffin smiles when he recalls that the former world champion Raymond McPherson was second. Meg is now five years old, reaching her prime, and is totally hooked on the sport. Well, I don't know what she gets out of it, but uh, when you go on the trail, she's preparing to go. I don't know, it's something in her, I suppose. She wants to win, I think. This very likeable young man is quickly making a name on the trials fields. He's so willing to learn from the experienced handlers. He says that every trial is a challenge. This is probably the biggest. There's Evan's mum and dad and his young lady. He looks composed enough, he settles down and, and Meg's so reliable that Evan, he must be confident. Sheep quietly moves to the post. And wait. Away she goes to the left. Certainly moving. She got her eyes on the sheep. Looking for a sheep again. Once she's out, she's out of heaven's sight now. She's really gone too far over. But he's he's keeping his cool. You see, he can't see her. She's over the back of the hill somewhere. But he's calling her up. There she goes. There she goes. She's looking for a sheep. She's past the field stuff. She's head up and looking for the sheep. 
Moves onto the sheet very slowly, but a bit of a disastrous outfield. 17 out of 20 scored, he's lost three points on the outrun. Now, he's just got it. She's she's just got to move up and take control of those sheep. And Evan's got to remain composed, forget what's happened, settle down and handle well. Yes, nine out of ten for the lift. She just hasn't really got them yet. Come on, lass. Come on. I know that you're, you're, she's testing these sheep. She's just feeling them, as we say. She just wants to know what they're like. And she just wants to slowly assert her authority upon them. She's a bit slow. She's very similar in, very similar to Flossen in, in the previous run. Just not balanced on the sheep. Not positive enough. She's still just struggling a bit, but she's she's got on the right lines for the fetch gates. Yes, pushes them through the fetch gates. I think she's settled now. They're going away from her now. She's bossed them. Let's gear down. Keep the pace right. Stand, 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 stand. stand. Just eases around the stand. back of Effie. And he's kept his stand. cool. He's kept his composure very nicely. Good partnership. 17 out of 20 for fetching. Only dropped three on the fetch. Now she's driving away. Starts the first stretch of the driving test. Just steady, lass. Just steady. She's got to push them through those drive away gates. And stopping the grey, she's just got to assert herself again on them, but she's doing that quite well. Come round, lass, now. Turns the sheep to start the cross drive, and ooh, steady, lass, steady, just a bit too sharp. Nearly turned them back there. A little eye on that bank side. <laughs> that young man's composed, anyway. <laughs> He's not letting it upset him at all, and Meg's doing as she's told. Got a good understanding. Now she's settled now. Steady, steady, steady. Just testing her every so often. She's got to move up and show that she's the boss. Swing them right round that single gate. The end of the cross drive. Start of the return drive up into the shedding ring. But she's certainly showing that she's the boss. They're awkward sheep and she's driving them quite well. She's the boss, she won't let them stop. You see, they jump them into action. Stand. Where? Stand. Get it. Where? Stand. Where? Stand. Get it. Stand. Come by. Savannah. Savannah. Young Evan commanding in the Welsh language to her. She certainly understands it. That's 36 out of 40 for driving. And she's bossed the sheet round that drive. Wait, stand. She's ready to help the young master Goodbye. on this stand. job as well. Goodbye. Stand. There's a chance stand. there. Possibility of red sheep on the right. She's just got the... Be Stand. careful, lass. Stand. Oh, there! Stand. Oh, that was good. Stand. That was a good shed. Stand. Stand. 
No good said that was yes, I like that. That's DS four points, ten out of ten for the shed. Stan. Swings right round to gather the packet of sheep together again. Stan. 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 Just creeps upon the sheep. Pushes them towards the pen. Come by, Stan, Stan, get up, get up, get up. Come by, Stan, 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 Stan. Just move round, Russ, just move round. There's one just threatened up the side there, but she turned it back and she pushed it so hard that it nearly tested heaven there. Stan. But she's held them, Stan. held them at the pen. Stan. And she's got them now. Gate closes there. Stand. Well, it was a, a good finish and it's appreciated. Yes, 10 out of 10 for the pen. Faultless and 99 out of 110 points scored. And although Meg, she had a bad start, but she certainly recovered a poise. And Evan and Meg have gone ahead of Gwillem and Floss. She recovered well from what was obviously a poor outrun and her driving was the best we've seen. She earned full points in the shedding and at the pen, Tonight, and Evan and Meg enjoy their shepherding. I mean, you're about half the age of uh, some of the competitors. It was a very, very workmanlike run, but it was just a little bit slow at the start. The sheep were grazing a lot, and they didn't seem to take control. What happened there? Well, I'm not sure. Then Meg over ran on the old trim, and then that left the sheep to graze for a bit more um, minutes, and that maybe had been enough for the sheep to start, they were heavy, a bit heavy for them. When you, when you get a dog that uh, does hang a little bit like that and you get the sheep, I suppose, very greedy off this lush pasture after yeah. the hill, how difficult is it to, to get them to bustle them without panicking them? Well, it, it depends a lot on the dog. Mike's very cautious with the sheep and uh, for the sheep in the whales, they're a bit more flighty and uh, she shoots them better, I think, than the <laughs> trailers. So the way you get a bit of rebellious ones like these, uh, she's a little bit gentle with him, is she? Yeah, she's a bit too gentle. Well, it was a jolly good run. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and thank you very much. Thank you. A couple of years ago, I introduced you to a young Lakeland farmer who cured insomnia nationally by teaching viewers how to count sheep in Lakeland dialect. It was an absolute riot, and he's here again today Harry Ralph, how did you count those sheep? Give us another count up, or count down, perhaps. Yan tian tether mother pimp, sever leather, other dother dick. Yan dick, chan dick, tether dick, nether dick, boom fit, yana boom fit, chana boom fit, tether boom fit, mother boom fit, gig it. That kept me awake, not sending me asleep. But when did you use that sort of uh, counting? What did you have to use it for? Well, that, that was in the olden days when uh, sheep were counted by the score. Yeah. And, uh, it originated back to, to the tally stick days when a score of sheep and you put a notch on the, the tally stick and then so on. Well, I know everything connected with you is something to do with sheep. I, I reckon this bench is, is it? What's this for? Yes, Phil, this is a, what we call a traditional sheep still. It's um, still in wide use today. For, um, well, people still uh, clip sheep on, on them with, with these things. What are those? Sheep clippers? These are shears. You shear them? No, you clip them. Oh, I see. You clip them with well, shears. Well, show us how you do it then. How do you get a sheep to stand on here? Well, you don't stand them on. You lie them on it. Yeah. You sit like this, um, and you, sh you lie your sheep on here. The sheep must be comfortable, unless it won't sit quiet. So you would lie them across and start down its neck. I shouldn't feel very comfortable with those things. How do they work? Well, you just... Clip it off like that. And how long would it take a good man to do that? Um, well, it varies really. A good, a good clipper would clip about a hundred a day. And what used to happen in the old days? Did, did they, everyone clip their own? No, um, they used to have what we call clipping days. And uh, what used to happen was everyone in the local valley uh, used to go around to one certain farm on a certain day, and uh, they would. There might be toward, you know, somewhere between 20 and 30 clippers there, some days. And uh, they used to sit on the stills along a wall. There used to be young lads catching them, and they used to clip away. Uh, there was beer served, <laughs> um, plenty to eat. The crack was good. 
And uh, any special food did you have for it? Well, they used to have a traditional uh, clipping pudding. This was uh, made up of all sorts. Um, Such as? Well, rice, sultanas, currants, um, beef matter, milk, and then uh, it was all mixed up and uh, boiled up and it was served cool. It was uh, very light, but satisfying. Yes, I bet it was. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Harry, with uh, those shears and uh, your pudding. <laughs> and a pint or two of ale, I should think that the old sheep were glad to get off the bench. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Harry, that was great. And now it's time to meet our last handler for the day. He's John Lightfoot, a Welshman born, bred and brought up near Rithin, who came into the sport of sheepdog trialling some 20 years ago. Today he farms nearly 130 acres of inby land at Landegla, where he keeps beef, cattle and 450 Welsh mountain ewes. They're a tough and hardy breed, able to cope with the shriveling winds and bitter winters that sheep farmers in that part of the country have to learn to live with. A few miles away, John grazes another hundred head of sheep on the rugged slopes of the Horseshoe Pass, a place familiar to both walkers and motorists who travel through North Wales. John has five dogs that he can call upon to help in the daily work. Jim, Black, Moss, Trim and Ben. They work equally well with sheep or cattle and John admits that their stamina and intelligence are invaluable to him, especially when the snow drifts deep, when the movement of livestock can be so hazardous. John and his wife Beryl have been at their present farm at Pentraeza for nearly 30 years. Like so many Welsh couples who love singing, both are members of the local choir and have sung at the National I Steadford. Apart from helping out in many ways on the farm, Beryl also occupies the professional role of Superintendent Registrar at Glendower Council at nearby Rithin. Their son, Gwyn, is John's partner on the farm and he shoulders the task of all the shearing in the summer months. With nearly 550 ewes to attend to and with each fleece weighing around three pounds, Gwyn reckons that over the shearing season, he and his father bale up nearly 1,500 weights of wool, ready for dispatching and grading at Denby towards the end of July. John and Beryl also have a married daughter, Janet, and their eldest granddaughter, Lisa, is devoted to her granddad. She's a happy little soul, especially when there's a new puppy around to feed and play with. John Lightfoot's been trialling for 20 years. He competes most weekends when at a trial his main purpose is to enjoy himself and meet up again with friends. He likes a bit of a leg pull and he comes away at the end of the day satisfied that his dog's done his best and so has he. If they win, John counts it a bonus, but for him it's far from the most important thing about trialling. For today's trials, he's running black. He's a very obedient dog, loves work and a very happy dog. Always happy in his work and a uh, good cattle dog, good companion, and a good friend. Trailing, he's done very well so far. He won in the Vivid last year, and he's won many open trails since then, and uh, seems like he's going to carry on winning. He very much enjoys his trailing and his everyday work. Well, to win this trial and become the Welsh television champion, John and Black have got to better the 99 scored by Heffin Jones and Meg. Well, Phil, Black, as his name would suggest, he's black coated. John's very experienced handler. And Black could be the dark horse of today's Welsh team. He's won many trials in his time. Away he goes to the right. And he's going with plenty of purpose. He knows what he's going for. <clears throat> Through 
the rushes up to the right of the sheep. Looks inwards for them. I'm swinging round past the field staff. John stops in 20 out of 20. That's a jolly good outrun. You see how he moved over to face the sheep there. And he's, he's moving them away from that uh, post very well. That's 10 out of 10 for the lift. A very positive lift. The dog's moving on to his sheep. He's got, he's got them going, perhaps with more purpose than the last two trials. Fetch gates there. Easy to drive sheep down in, of course, but you've just got to keep them under control. Starts to push them up to the handler. He's got them on, on the good control. And they're just drifting offline there. It's a fault. Very little wrong with it so far. John, finish the fetch, and it's 19 out of 20 for the fetch, and he's only one point drop so far. Good trial, good positive work. He's down the hill for the first leg of the drive-in. He's plodding on there, he's blacky. He, he's got these sheep under control. Swing them round now. Safely through the drive away he gets. He's got to swing them onto the cross drive. He's perhaps a little too high on line there. He'd be I would fault him there. Steady him up a bit, just steady him up. They're just going a bit too fast now. You've got to be careful in the control. And if he's not careful, he's going to come inside that single gate that marks the end of the cross drive. Want to swing them right round there. He's got them. He's got them. He's still got hold of them. He's still pushing them and well round the gate. Comes up into the shedding room. Wife Beryl in the dark glasses. And the sheep come up into the shedding ring at the end of the drive. And John's watching those sheep. And well, you must be comfortable in front now. Still, still 20 points at stake, though. He's got to shed and he's got to bend the sheep. But he's. He's got a quick dog, a good dog, a dog that reacts immediately to his control. That's 35 out of 40 for driving. Ten. Drop five on the driving. Ten. But he's got these sheep rather compact and just Three. the danger Ten. of pushing them a bit is to keep them compact around the course. They tend to stay compact Ten. in the in the ring and Ten. we want Ten. them to spread out Ten. here. But it's a, a test of the partnership, man and dog together. Black's in the right place. That's got him nicely in the right place. Yes, lie down, stay there. We don't want him any closer. No push, just taking his time. He's just got to move them around until he gets it. A ridge there, but no, no, that doesn't go across. It's always the wrong sheep that goes to the end. We want it a red collared sheep at the end so that we can cut it off so that the dog can cut it off. There's no panic, just take things easy. But oh, steady, boy, steady, keep him down. He doesn't want to press too much onto him. Keep him back. That's, you, that's what happens. Press, too much pressure, the dog came up when he shouldn't have done, and he's pushed those sheep out of the ring, and he's dropped some points there. Got to put him back in the right place now, has John. Go back, go back, like, round to the other side, and settle. 
Let everything settle for a minute. Got him in the right place now. Eyes and eyes and ears missing nothing at all. Dog's ready. He was too ready for the moment to go. He pushed too hard. Oh, good one there. He's got it, yes. But he'll be faulted for his earlier mistakes. That's eight out of ten for the shed. He's dropped two on the shed, and he still needs a good pen to win. I do. Oh, steady boy. He's taking him two round. He, he's turned those, he stopped those sheep in the tracks then, but fortunately John saw him and held him back and he's got them in now. And it must be a good pen, that, yes. I think he's got a good pen there. That's uh, 10 out of 10 for the pen. And that gives him 102 out of 110. And that's the highest score of the series so far. Well, it was a very professional run. The man and the dog worked in harmony. They were together in everything they did. They had a good understanding. It was a very sound trial. So, confirmation of the final result. John Lightfoot, the farmer from North Wales, wins by three points from young Heffin Jones with Gwilym Jones from Breckford in third place. John, that was an absolutely cracking round right up until you got into the ring. What happened yeah. then? You nearly lost it. I did. Um, well, the sheep were a bit sharp and the dog was a bit sharp, maybe. And uh, maybe I tried to rush the job a bit. Well, old hands like you don't rush jobs. What made you do that? Oh, nerves, maybe. Do you, how much nerves do you get? Well, I suppose you have to work before you go to the bag. You can settle down a bit after. Well, once you've got them bouncing, like they did bounce out of the ring, yeah. How do you settle them down again? Well, keep calm. Just stand for a minute, innit? Let them calm down again. Softly, softly, softly catch softly. monkey. That's right. <laughs> That's well, right. it certainly worked. It was a lovely run. Okay. Made you champion, and we wish you the very best of luck in the next round. Thanks very much. Thank you. Watching clever, faithful dogs like that, it sometimes causes viewers to go out and buy a pup on impulse. Well, please don't think about it very carefully because collies have been evolved over generations as hard, tough, working dogs. And they need discipline and they need absolutely endless exercise. They're not the dogs for family pets. And to take them to a city and have them on city pavements and leave them for hours of lonely idleness while the boss is at the office is doing them no kindness. Now, next week, it's the turn of the Irish to come, and we've also got a very special guest who I'm sure you won't want to miss. He's a master craftsman at the art of making crooks, and he's promised to show us some of the tricks of his trade. So join us again next week, for I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Welcome again to Derwent Water. It's an absolutely marvellous autumn day with low cloud and uh, a little mist on the top of the hills. 
perfect weather now. Uh, the man on the uh, wireless, the weatherman on the wireless, he said that it ought to be raining by now. I'm glad to say he's wrong. I hope he stays wrong all day. You can never tell up here in the Lake District. But uh, one of the things that I enjoy so much about doing this program is that I'm continually meeting old friends and uh, making new ones that I shouldn't have met any other way. And today's no exception because we've got three delightful Irishmen. They've been making a name for themselves in the Emerald Isle. One comes from the north and two from the south. So that I reckon, Eric, that it's all going to depend on who's got the best dog. What's your prediction? That's true, but <laughs> I'll tell you that. I'll give you an the answer to that at the end of the day, Phil. But uh, we have got three good dogs, and Irish dogs in general, I'm not knocking them, but you've got a good top flight, but the general working dog is not probably up to the standard on mainland. But we've got three good dogs in, on, on this occasion, and all five or six years old, which is a good, experienced dog. You know, they've got the experience as well of the uh, knowledge of working sheep. There's uh, William McGoldrick with Bess. She's six years old. She's an Irish international bitch. Uh, you've got Johnny Casey with Ben, and that's a grand ill dog. And I, I mean, I'm an ill dog man, so that's what I like. But John and John Brennan with Del, a seven-year-old uh, bitch, won the 86 Irish Championships. So three good dogs. Well, the first of our Irish competitors was born on a farm in County Tyrone. He's William McGoldrick, who still lives on that same farm, which is within sight of the southern border, and he stocks it with black-faced ewes and cattle. William's mother died when he was only four years old. His father moved away and he was reared by his late grandmother and his two bachelor uncles who were born on the same farm and have also spent most of their lives there. Both are retired now, so they leave the running of the farm to William. Apart from an occasional sing-song of Irish ballads, his only hobby is trialling. He began his training very young. I'd get interested in dogs from six or seven year old and always liked working dogs. And I think the happiest day of my life was the day I left school. I know then I would get full time at working the sheep for the, these dogs and working the cattle. I think that was the happiest day of my life. I enjoy trialing because it's, uh, it's uh, the interest in the dogs and it takes you out. It takes you out to meet the people and you make, make a lot of friends. And um, if it wasn't for that, you won't, you won't probably get out at all, only very seldom. I go there and do my best, and if I won, it's all right, and if I don't, it's all right. I'm still as keen to go back the next day. In fact, Williams won over 50 open trials in 20 years of competition, and he's been on the Irish team four times. Of all his dogs, his favourite is Chip, who gave him his first major successes, and who, at 13, is living in well-earned retirement. Chip, yes, come on. Chip used to herd cows as well as sheep, but a cow with a calf can be dangerous, and his leg got broken twice. So now William's cows are herded by one bitch only by the name of Fleet, who seems so far able to take good care of herself. Though William agrees that the best dogs reach their peak at six or seven, he prefers running a three or four year old before it's developed a mind of its own and thinks it knows as much as he does. He insists on training all his dogs himself. One of his best trialling dogs is Sweep, but there can be problems. I think he disturbs the sheep a bit with being all black and he moves pretty fast when he moves. Like, So he disturbs the sheep and it's not easy doing straight lines with disturbed sheep. William has several young dogs coming on, including this three-month-old puppy. It's far too early to tell if it's a champion potential yet, but William's living in hopes. Today's competitor, though, is a proven champion. She's Bess, a daughter of old Chip. She's, she's small, she's small. She's not a very big bitch, but she's a perfect bitch to shift sheep with everyday work. She's very intelligent. And uh, the first year I started with her, I won four open trials and she's been on the Irish team as well. Uh, and um, still very consistent and very good for trialing. I like her fairly well, anyhow. So let's enjoy this perfect morning in the lakes. It's absolutely ideal for a good day's sport. 
And with seven Swaledale ewes being walked out, we're ready for the first trial of the Irish team. Yes, my life. William is a man who spent his whole life with stock, and he knows the true value of a collie dog yes. as a workmate. He knows just how important it is yes. to have the right yes. understanding with yes. his dogs, yes. and of course he's proved it also on the trial field. He's represented Ireland on four occasions. Bess, she was six in the national team in 1986 yes. to represent yes. Ireland. Yes. 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 Sheep yes. moving quietly to the post at the top of the field. Yes. Mm -hmm. Bess is ready. William's ready. Away she goes to the left. Looking head up for the sheep, looking for the sheep. Just got to be careful. Oh, he's whistled her there. There's a point gone there, but he's... She's gone over the hill, and he's looking for her. He can't see her. She's left entirely to her own devices now. Some, some spectators there looking for her. Oh, she's come back past the staff there. She's looking for a sheep. She's got her head up. She's. I think she's seen... Yes, she's seen them there. Moves in on them, but she's coming at them from an angle. That's right. Blow her. William blows her to the back of the sheep. And she's lost some points at 16. She's lost four points indeed on that out. On 16 out of 20 scored. But she's taking a very positive lift. She's taking all of the sheep at the lift. That's 10 out of 10 for the lift. And she's bringing them down the hillside very nicely. She's padding along behind. She's got them bunched. A good pace. She's immediately got over the bad out running.